why the per capita income is less? If you see the income of uh, any country, the major source is from three. The industrial activity, the agricultural activity, and the service sector. These three together form 75 to 80% of the nation's income, and all others are miscellaneous. So as far as industrial activity is concerned, all of us are chemical engineers, and in chemical industry, these are the, whatever numbers here you see, these are in crores, the world over market for chemicals is 14 million crores. Whereas the India's participation to worldwide market is 2 lakh crores and uh, the business that we do in the, in the world is 1.4%. That is in the chemical sector. In herbal healthcare, and we rightly claim that the herbal healthcare was originated in India, but what is the business that we do in herbal healthcare? The possible business is 1.5 million crores, we do 15,000 and it is 1%. Food processing, 1.5%. Electronics, 0.1%. The mechanical, 0.7%. Biotechnology, 0.9% in energy 4%. So if you see overall, our participation in the world market is more or less around 1%. What I'm explaining you is why the per capita income is so low and we are standing 140th in the, in the world. Next slide. So this was about industrial activity. All these activities were related to uh, chemical engineering, chemical technology, but uh, if you see whatever is here, the laser pointer, the projector, the mobiles that all of us are having, the polyester that we are wearing, the car of any design, the aeroplane of any design, whatever comes to your mind, none has been innovated in India. Therefore, innovation index is equal to why the country is poor, and therefore, our uh, rank is 140. As far as agriculture is concerned, I have listed in the first column rice, wheat, mango, sugarcane, beans, okra, chickpeas, onion, and you can see that the productivity of our land is three to five times, sometimes ten times less as compared to whatever has been proven in the world. And this is after Green Revolution. A green Revolution has brought something very good to our country, but then also the per hectare productivity, you take say for example, uh, soya bean is 1.1 tons, what is proven is 3.7 tons, so it is three times less. So industrial activity, we do 1% business, in agricultural activity, we produce three to five times less as compared to world, and as regards to service sector, that is in the next slide, Large number of engineers are now employed in service sector and IT section, but if you see the quality of job, the innovations that the engineers are doing and the companies in IT sector in India are doing are at the poorest level. And therefore, the income that we get from this sector is also very low. So from these three sectors put together, total uh, income of the country is 130 lakh crores, the population is 130 crores, and therefore per capita income is one lakh. And therefore we are poor. So if we wish to raise from this particular level, then the only solution is we need to be innovative. Next slide. About 10% we spend in buying crude oil. And then large number of electronic equipment, machines, energies, pump, chemicals also, defense equipment, we buy from outside. You must have heard in last couple of years, the uh, uh, Russian president, Mr. Putin visited us. Then Prime Minister of Canada, he visited us. Israel Prime Minister, he also visited us. 
and very recently the French President Hills. And in newspapers, what do you see? They are participating in cultural programs, dancing with uh, some uh, students and, right? But what is the purpose that they come? Mr. Putin signed an agreement for the export of items to India, more than two lakh crores. Right? The French president, 40,000 crores. The Israel Prime Minister, 70,000 crores. That is the So we are the buyers. We are the buyers. What we sell in the world is less than 1%. Less than 1%. Next slide. That way we are rich. And I'm going to tell you just a couple of examples. As uh, regards to titanium, the total reserves in the world are 600 million tons. And India is having 100 million tons of reserves of titanium ore in the form of TiO2, or ilmenite sand. But what do we do? What do we do? We sell this sand at 6 rupees a kilogram, and we don't have any plan for titanium. Whenever I say any, there may be something small here and there. But nothing, practically nothing. And buy import and import titanium at 2,500 rupees a kilogram. Similarly, in the, the healthcare also, the plants which are very useful, and we are we are exporting at the lowest at two rupees a kilogram, ten rupees a kilogram. We are selling and importing again three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand rupees a kilogram as as a final medicine. Next slide. So why this is happening? Why this is happening? Why our income is less? And why we are importing? And whatever we have in terms of ores and uh, and uh, in healthcare, particularly the Ayurved, the uh, China is having a market of 30%. And as far as fundamental knowledge is concerned in Ayurved, last year they uh, earned the Nobel Prize also in that particular sector. So they were innovative, and our though it is our science, we are participating 1%. So we ask large number of sections of the society why this condition has happened. Why we are poor and why we are not participating worldwide in terms of market and why we are not innovating. So this is my personal experience. I asked large number of industry people why industry is not doing well. So this is the first column. So what they say the infrastructure in India is poor right? in terms of quality of roads and railways and communications. Though it is improving, world is improving much faster than uh, these basic facilities. The cost of finance is high. If you wish to uh, raise money from banks, the interest rates are between 10 to 15 percent. In USA, it is 6 percent. and. Uh, in Switzerland, 3%, and in uh, Middle East, it is 0%, something like that. The cost of energy is also very high. Per unit, we have to pay 8 rupees. Again, they give, in Switzerland, 2 rupees per unit, and in Middle East, it is free. So if this is the case, how our business can be competitive? My dear students, I invite your attention at this stage. All of you, please attend to my next lecture, next few sentences. I'm going to give you a few examples later on. So these are more or less cries. In reality, if you wish to participate in worldwide market, you need to be innovative and not to make complaints like this. That the Infrastructure is not there, cost of finance. I'll give you one or two examples where the cost of finance in the overall business is negligible. Cost of energy is also negligible. The real profits are within innovations. 
and what is the order of magnitude of those profits versus cost of energy I'm going to tell you. The cost of energy, no incentive for R&D. Right? So of course they earn their own money, but still they want incentives for R&D. And last sentence is very, very important. We do not get meaningful help from academics and R&D institutions. It is their complaint. I asked academia why we are poor. Right? So what they say? So that these complaints and cries are different, these cries are different. The last cry is of course the same. They say that we do not get meaningful support from industry. Exactly the reciprocal of this. <laughs> Meager funding from government or no funding. Poor availability of good students. Now this I have been hearing last 50 years. <laughs> One who be becomes teacher after studentship, he starts saying that these days there are no good students. And then there are. <coughs> so if we say that uh, we don't get good students, then the students get power to say that we don't have good teachers. <laughs> <laughs> And I have been teaching now for 46 years, and it is my conviction that year after year, the quality of students is improving. Right from 1972 till today, the quality, the commitment, it is improving. I am not saying about anything other than the quality of students, but I don't think that is, a, that is also a complaint. Poor availability of good students, and we do not get. If you ask common man, then what are their problems? The current status is because of politicians. The politicians have made bad to, the, to our country. Otherwise, all of us individually are so nice. We are, doing, we are doing so good. But because of the politics and politicians, they have ruined our country. According to me, it is also a cry. Engineering into autonomous body and then to university, I had to meet large number of ministers. And their understanding of education and their desire for education, implementation of education, it was much better than many vice chancellors then. This is not, this is not entirely true that politicians have ruined our country. So individually, we are doing good jobs. So what I'm trying to bring out, and my dear students, if you want to take a single message from this lecture, don't complain in life. Those who complain, they cannot do anything meaningful in life. Right? So every day you examine, if you have some complaint, but mother has cooked something and you don't like something and you make a complaint, this means there is a problem. You are facing some problem. If you are complaining something different in college, in the institution, in industry because of something, then you can increasingly say that I have a heart problem or, or as good as you have a cancer. Some people keep on complaining only. If there is no performance, there is always a reason. Actually, as a PhD guide, I have made a list of 14 complaints. <laughs> and when uh, I asked the students what has happened yesterday or last week, and then he says something and I show the number. This is number seven. <laughs> So the single message, don't complain in life. If you want to do at least something meaningful, or in other words, keep smiling. Always keep smiling. That creates an ambience, a creative ambience, and others also perform very well. But this particular message of no complaints and keep smiling, I may say it two or three times in my lecture. Sometimes I use it 100 times. But today I may use for two, three times. <coughs> Next slide. About innovations, 
I'm going to tell you success stories. I'm going to tell you success stories in order to explain that some of those complaints, like cost of energy, cost of infrastructure, or uh, the cost of interest, bank interest, how negligible it is as compared to innovation. <clears throat> I'm going to give you an example of hydrogenation and this example I have been giving for last 25 years, whatever may be the subject for which I am called for giving lecture, definitely I give this example. And the example goes like this. In the up to mid-80s, all hydrogenations were done by direct contact with iron and acid. As you know, when iron filings, are contacted with um, either nitric acid or hydrochloric acid, nascent hydrogen is generated. And we need hydrogenation for a variety of things in chemical industry, say paracetamol, many, many other things. So, are nitrobenzene to aniline. So, nitrobenzene is added together with uh, iron filings, and hydrochloric acid is poured on this mixture. The nascent hydrogen which is generated, it hydrogenates nitrobenzene and we get aniline. Right. This was the process practiced in mid 80s. What is the result? We get 5 kilograms of waste, solid waste, per kilogram of product. And disposing the solid waste is a, is a big problem, 5 kilograms. Even more intense problem is the aniline or hydrogenated products, these are carcinogenic. And whatever is trapped in the solid waste that we don't get in hand, therefore yield is 90%, 92%, 95%, so it is not economically attractive also. Right? A clean process of catalytic hydrogenation was known in the world at that time. But the hydrogenators were not were not available. So, around 1988, my industry friend, he asked me, let us uh, buy one hydrogenator from outside. And uh, there was a company, one in uh, Switzerland, one in uh, Germany, and I will not name the company here, and I went there. And for three ton hydrogenator, they quoted 10 crores of rupees. At the end of this example, what I want to bring out is what is the effectiveness of innovation, right? And how to innovate also. And how the complaints, they don't have any place. These are the points which I'm explaining through, through this example. So 10 crores. And why such a hydrogen? What is that speciality that they have? Whenever we pass hydrogen in, say, nitrobenzene, the solubility of hydrogen in nitrobenzene, or whatever is to be, it is the property of hydrogen of having low solubility in liquid phase. And therefore, whatever is passed at the bottom, most of it remains unreacted. Of course, some part gets reacted, and there is uh, hydrogen accumulates in the gas phase. Once it accumulates, we cannot let it to atmosphere. One is, of course, uh, the explosive nature of hydrogen, but hydrogen has a price. Right now it is more than 400, 400 rupees a kilogram. So we cannot waste. <coughs> so one way, simple way, is to take it out and then use a compressor. But the, we know that the compressors are even more expensive than the stirred tanks and any re external recycle <laughs> as far as hydrogenation, hydrogen is concerned is to be avoided. So what is to be done? Next slide. The, there has to be some facility for internal circulation of hydrogen. Whatever is unreacted hydrogen and goes to gas space, it has to be brought back to the liquid and uh, make hydrogen available for the reaction. <laughs> So this was the technology developed by Germans and Swiss people and the quotation for 3 ton reactor was 10 crores of rupees. 3 ton reactor, 10 crores of rupees. 
if you see the material, the quantity of stainless steel which goes in the fabrication of the reactor is up, was about 10 lakh at that time, and the quotation was 10 crores. Right? So if we take this kind of money from the bank, and there is a depreciation of equipment, the cost of depreciation and interest is 40 rupees. Right? So about 12% interest and 10% depreciation, 22% of 10 crores, and you produce something per day and per year, and per cost, uh, per kilogram cost, the uh, cost of investment and uh, the interest and depreciation is, is 40 rupees. So when we spend 40 rupees, then definitely we are not internationally competitive. And therefore, we make business less than 1%. So in majority of cases, we are buying technologies. We are 19 refineries up till now in the country, under Reliance and all, all other names. If you want to have another 20th refinery, I'm sure it will be purchased from outside again. <laughs> we engineers, let us think about it. Our blood should boil, really. Why we are doing so? We should develop what is there so complicated in, in the refinery equipment are the examples which I'm going to tell you one after the another. <clears throat> so 40 rupees. So the I came back, of course, I could understand that 10 crores was not attractive. I came back and my industry friend was, of course, wise. He said that uh, we have excellent facility in India for fabrication, let us take only drawings from them at some cost and we'll save a lot of money. That was the, of course, thinking of my friend. I went back and uh, asked for drawings. And they readily agreed, they were so nice and they said, we will also give you money on loan. Right. But the cost of drawings is 9 crore 70 lakh. <laughs> Why our country is poor? Right. And then my blood boiled. 1988 started designing. What is so critical about it? What is the science behind it? What is the chemical engineering behind it? So unreacted gas is, uh, it occupies a position in the gas space and it has to be brought back. So the impeller, the stirrer, is covered with wood like a pump and there is a one inlet at the top here there is an inlet whenever there is flow past any immersed body no pressure region is created behind the behind that body and here the flow past immersed body is impeller the flow is occurring and there are no pressure regions and when what is otherwise the pressure at this level, it is HROG, whatever is the row, HROG, and therefore gas cannot penetrate directly. But the rotation of impeller, if it creates a pressure which is even less than gas phase pressure, then there is a passage available for the flow of hydrogen, and hydrogen starts flowing in. Right? So what is required to design an impeller in such a way that for a given power consumption, it generates very low pressure, as low pressure as possible. There can be 50 designs of impellers. So can we understand the fluid mechanics of flow past immersed body in such a way that for given power consumption, we get low pressure? Next slide. And therefore, computational fluid dynamics was run. And obviously, there, was, there were a couple of impellers which gave the lowest pressure. And when implemented, next slide, the most popular self-inducing impeller, this is called self-inducing impeller, that is it uh, induces gas from the gas space on its own. The best known was Denver flotation cell, and at a power consumption of one kilowatt per ton, it could induce 0.1 liter. And for hydrogenation to be economical, it had to be 50 liters. So we kept on improving the impellers, and eventually 
by 1991, we developed such a hydrogenator and implemented in 1990 the same three ton reactor in 30 lakh rupees instead of 10 lakh. Now the 30 lakh rupees, the cost is 33 times less as compared to 10 crores. You calculate depreciation and interest which is close to one, one rupee and you become worldwide competitive. Export started and now hydrogenation based products India's export is more than 10,000 crores. The, those companies reduce the prices from 10 crores to 8 crores to 5 crores to 2 crores. But if Indian equipment is available at 30 lakh, who is going to buy? In a similar manner, the institute developed large number of additional equipment by understanding chemical engineering principles. There is nothing beyond chemical engineering. And now these are exported. See, these business people they don't have a um, nation in mind. Whatever is cheap, they will buy. So German people, we <coughs> normally say that the German product, it looks nice. It is reliable. It is precision. But the five products that we have developed, the German companies are buying because it is much less expensive and equally performing and therefore German side. They were not believing that high, how such a high quality can happen in India. So therefore, my industry friend, uh, he uh, opened R&D institution in Netherlands so that Europeans can visit and actually see that the level of science that we are, we are using. What I'm trying to bring up to you, my dear students, it is possible. It is possible. 